I like to start all of my interviews off with a little bit of a softball. Um, what was your first job in the movie and TV industry? My first job? Um, oh, like my first big job, I would say, was this um, serious regular role, actually. That was like my first big job. If I have to think about back to like what my first job job was, I think it was a commercial. Um, I do a lot of commercials back home in Norway where I'm from. Um, but my first big job was a series regular role um, in the fairy tale world, actually, um, based on Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. It was a modern take on it, um, filmed in Paris, but like set in an East Coast town um, and kind of daunting to like do a series regular role. Um, but I took it on and uh, had a great time. So I, yeah, I think that was probably my first big, actually, no, that's a lie. Now I remember. <laughs> I had like this one, one like, um, I guess it was like a, like not a cameo, but you know, um, just like a day player where I was playing this like girl at a karaoke bar singing like this, this, this like drunk song uh, in a soap opera back home called home. That's, that was my first. Yeah. Love that. Right. You know, who doesn't love a good karaoke? You know what I mean? Like it's exactly. a little who moment. <laughs> Who are some of those early influences, you know, the actresses, directors, maybe actors that you kind of looked up to? So I was a huge, still am, but like I was a huge Nicole Kidman fan, like huge, like Moulin Rouge, The Hours, like she like came out with those like hits, like one after one of like, and The Others, that is probably my favorite, like thriller, not really horror, right? Thriller films. Um, and I was like, I loved Baz Luhrmann at that time. Like Strictly Ballroom was amazing. Um, yeah, they were like, I want to work with them one day. So I think back then and Meryl Streep, but mostly like Nicole Kidman really like loved her. Still love her. Baz is so good. He's like, so good. He's so good. Elvis. I, I mean, Elvis. You have, you have no, it? I, oh, no, I'm going to. I've seen you 10 times, so. I've seen it enough for both of us. <laughs> oh my God. Well, then I'm going to go see it. Love <laughs> so, it. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah. Um, obviously, the reason we're here to talk today is Disenchanted. Take me behind the audition process for the role. So actually pretty straightforward, I think. Um, as an actor, like, got my audition. <laughs> my audition came in through my agents they like sent it to me I was like sweet is this for disenchant what's that Simpson show it's disenchantment or something yeah and it said VO at the top so I was like okay this is a voiceover uh audition great but they want it filmed that's very strange and then I like clocked it after a while <laughs> that it wasn't that okay and then I was like um like, what is this? I don't recognize the names because, you know, Disney sends fake sides. They don't want anything leaked. Um, so I I just like read it and then I was like, oh, this kind of like, kind of could be like, it's a bit fairy tale-esque. Like, what is this? And then eventually I got more details about um, producers, director. And I was like, ah, oh, okay. I know what this is. Didn't even know they were making a sequel. Um, and I it was the audition sides themselves had like I think I had two lines and it was like super high intensive intensity emotions um I find like two line auditions are really difficult because you, you like have to be the character you have to you have to deliver because they don't want to like worry about you on the day they want to know like you've got it done next um so I like did three great takes at the studio that I tape at in London. Um, like looked, it looked great. They're amazing. Um, and uh, gave them three different takes. And uh, then I got a call like a week later, I think. And they said, you know, they're just checking your availability. And I'm like, don't, don't get hopes up. 
you know, because like we well, actors do that, like they check to my availability. Everything was clear from the diary. And then um, a week later, I booked it and I had auditioned for a few things. So I didn't catch what my agent said on the phone. And I was like, OK, okay I guess. Great. Like, thanks. And then I don't think I gave her the reaction she wanted. <laughs> because I was like okay well awesome great thanks so much like um and then I like I sat down and I was like what did did she say disenchanted and then I like I had to call her back because I felt so bad I like I was like oh my god I was in shock I had no idea but like I just I was like spaced out like I didn't even know what it you know so but it was pretty straightforward I think um yeah yeah absolutely and then of course you get the call and then you know what's it like kind of you know this is you know this is Disney you know what I'm saying it's it's a big production big this big that we know it's a big role we know it's gonna you know everybody's gonna especially being on Disney plus with the streaming aspect of things you're gonna like people are gonna see it right away see the faces and stuff like that. What What's that kind of like going to the set and then kind of understanding that it's not to discredit all your previous work or anybody else. It's just, this is a big role. What's it kind of like feeling that first day on set? Um, You know, I, I was a bit like in disbelief, I guess, because the scope of it, I was like, whoa, I'm being picked up in a car. We're going to a castle north of London. The set decor was like incredible. Like, honestly, like these people are like at the top of their game, right? So I'm like, here I am, like, they're just gonna plonk me in the middle of this thing. Um, but the thing is that that, you know, I had fittings for for hair and costume and all of that. They put me in like this long, wavy, romantic looking red hair wig, um, and this like beautiful, like, um, like terracotta tones like villager outfit and I you know for me like that's like half the job done right so you've got the costume you've got the look you get there I had a trailer I've never had a trailer before like I'll just admit it like I was like what is this I even had a bathroom <laughs> like it was amazing <laughs> And like, and like our headshots were up on the wall and like Amy's with, was there, Patrick, like, and Adina, James, like it was all up there and there like was my face as well. And I was like, oh my God, I made it. <laughs> but like, for me, it was just like such a milestone. And I think, um, yeah, I just, when you get plunked in, but then it's like, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, this is such a big thing. But I think like, a, a, like this different gear takes over, at least for me, like when I get on set, like I, it's, it's time to work. Like, you know, I don't care if I'm a fan of like Patrick Dempsey and he's standing right in front of me. Like he is my co like, I'm going to act with him. Like it's, it's a job and you do the job and you're hired. And also because it is such a big project, like you just do your job right like you don't have time <laughs> to do yeah, and, and you want to you want to you want the call back at some point you know what I mean you want to yeah. you want that door to stay open for you right yeah and you want to be remembered as the person who like came in nailed it and left you know like yeah and it was it was really great and like getting to work with Adam who's just such a lovely person and like yeah he's just such a great guy Patrick's such an amazing guy and my co-star um who played my husband Ed Harris he's like he's he's really really cool as well so it was just everyone is so lovely yeah that's gonna be my follow-up I mean I know you share a scene there with Patrick Dempsey you know what I mean like that's you know everybody I mean who doesn't know Patrick Dempsey obviously you know what I mean I was I know I'm, he's like McDreamy you know what I mean like that's what I know him as you know what I mean like it's, I know. you know what I'm saying? like it's I, I didn't want to be like hey I, you know, obviously I wasn't sure you know are you you know did you watch crazy and I was like I was gonna be like what is it like working with McDreamy but now that I know you know what I mean it's like what is it like working with McDreamy you know what I mean Okay, so I feel like I might have manifested this in some way because I was such a huge, I still am, but I was such a huge Grey's Anatomy fan when it came out. So much that I went to USC because Shonda Rhimes went and got her master's at USC. So I went to USC. Um, McDreamy was going to be my husband one day. I know he's married, so like obviously not, but you know, like I love I love him. He's so charismatic on the screen. And then like 
I say this to my friends, like he was standing there right in front of me, like addressed me by name, gave me like a fist bump, you know, because it was like slight COVID times. Like it was just, I, it was really like the, the, I guess I don't remember how old I was, but like the teenage version of me was like, holy crap, like <laughs> this, this is even real life. And he was so nice like he was like it's just like your your guys's first day here like he was he was so hyper aware of everything going on and he kept asking making sure like do you know where we're starting from do you know and I had a close-up so he's like all right we need like we need you to like look your best like can we get people in to like last looks like he just like took such good care of me and like uh the guy playing my husband and the little girl and it's just he was really 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 great and like made sure that this was like a great experience and and like I he he would not know unless he like hears any of the things I've said now but he would not know that I was a fan because um I kept it so cool that like my the guy playing my husband uh was like at the end of the day I was like oh like I mentioned I knew something about you know he races cars and stuff like that and he's like oh whoa you kept it cool so yeah. I'm yeah, a, of course. I'm I mean, obviously you keep it, you know, yeah, of course. You got to keep it professional and set and stuff like that for sure. Absolutely. But like it's also one of those, you know, hey, you know, I'm 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 some I'm making it. You know what I mean? Like it's it's like one of those goes hand in hand things, you know what I'm saying? Like here I am, I'm doing my thing like I'm supposed to, but at the same time, here I am with somebody that I sat down as a teenager and was watching on TV, a very successful actor, and now here we are on the screen together. So it's like a full circle moment, you know, yeah. which it's kind of crazy to think about, as you said, it, because it's like, you know, I'm being an actor's hard as is, but like yeah. understanding, like working next to somebody that you appreciate obviously isn't easy, but you know what I mean? Him, but then of course him being the way he was helps the scenario as well. You know what I mean? It's like, it checks yeah. a box. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. that's fantastic. He like walked on set, was like, hello everyone, you know? And I know like I've worked jobs where it's like, if you're number one on the call sheet, like you're leading the day, like you are the master of the ship. So he just like walked on was so nice, like, but also like so professional. And I walked off of set and was like, I want to be like that when I like make it to that level, <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. All yeah. right. So my, my last question for you here is this. I'm going to ask, obviously we talked a little bit, Nicole, we got Baz, but this is, I want you to, I want you to make the perfect movie, right? You know what I mean? I want you to, your director, I want some two other cast members, maybe three other cast members that that's an ideal dream scenario for you. Oh my gosh. Oh, you're putting me on the spot. Um, um, oh, oh. Okay, I'm really into Handmaid's Tale at the moment. Well, I, I that's my dream project to work on. But I think ideal co-stars. So I love Bradley Whitford, like love him. He's so smart and charming and charismatic. So I would love to work with him. I would love for um maybe maybe Carrie Scoglin. I don't know how you say it, but it's a the region last name but yeah she directed a lot of the um the handmaid's tale and she did winter soldier a uh, falcon oh i always mess up that name but um i'd love for her to direct that would be really cool i think she's got such a good eye like and and good taste um and then ah yeah maybe i'd want to act with elizabeth moss as well that'd be cool Maybe I'm too deep in Handmaid's Tale. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm like, just put me in Handmaid's Tale. Right, exactly. Yeah, like, you hear this? I mean, everybody, anybody watching this, if you're watching that, just, just put her on the, like, we got a dream scenario, like, forecast it right here in front of everybody. You know what I mean? Like, just make it happen. Exactly. I'm just going to manifest it right exactly. now. Exactly. We're going to manifest. Let's go. You know, and we'll talk in, like, a year's time and be like, you know, remember we talked about this and here we are. You know what I'm saying? So. Exactly. You know, I mean, I'll just. I'll be a handmaid. It's great. Like, it, right. Be whatever. It doesn't like, we're not even asking for, a, we're not asking for much here. We're just, you know <laughs> what I mean? Let's just get her on the screen with these people. You know what I mean? Yeah, so Ingrid, exactly. thank you so much for your time today. It's lovely chatting with you and yeah. nothing but success yeah. on the film. I'm excited. You're stateside. Enjoy the premiere and all that yeah. comes with that. So yeah. Thank you so, so much for having me. It's been a pleasure.